Well, hello friends, Marcus D coming at you with a brand new video I'm producing for the Great Questions group. And this evening I'm bringing to you part seven in this kind of mini series I'm doing on science and origins. And so this evening, as you can see by the title, I'm bringing you the topic um, information, all right? Specifically information law. And it is one of the five particular laws that I actually used when I was on this journey, which I'm actually sharing a recount of, my Great Questions Quest, um, trying to find <clears throat> evidence that would provide accurate answers to those four great questions of life. And so today, um, I want to talk to you a little bit um, about this law of information as we are now um, in what many people call the hyper-information age. Um, I'm sure everybody's well aware of that. We've had a, an influx of information because of primarily technology that mankind has never seen before, um, you know, exponentially. Um, it is amazing how much information we are confronted with in our society today um, compared to just uh, 100, 200 years ago um, and for a long, long time prior to that. But because of this, folks, a lot of people, uh, scientists and people that have studied this area, have actually formulated some principles and actually what is now known as information law. Um, and what I want to do is I actually want to um, share with you something that I actually um, started becoming aware of and then I began to think about and reflect on um, that kind of bears this out in a very, very simple way. Because, um, you know, regarding the information law that people have come up with, again, keeping this very simple, um, they've used some different particular definitions to describe information, um, what it is. Um, but folks, but primarily it is a code, all right? It is something that is intelligent, something that is understandable. It's a blueprint, okay? Um, it's instructions, all right? It's, it's communication. And... <clears throat> What we've ultimately found is that information ultimately um, points to an intelligent source. And intelligence, we have found, ultimately only comes from a mind, right? And let me bear this out. Um, uh, any of you that have been kind of following along with these videos, particularly if you were, have been a part of this group long enough that... Um, You've listened to any of the classic audios I, I did back in the day, um, which, by the way, are all posted on the website. Um, and you all know that um, <clears throat> I originally had an interest in outer space, the cosmos, the universe, uh, Star Trek, Star Wars, wanted to be an astronaut originally when I was a kid and for quite some time afterwards. Um, I'm kind of glad that uh, the Lord didn't lead me down that path, so had other plans for me. Um, uh, although one day uh, we are gonna get an opportunity to explore all of the new heaven and new earth, which he's gonna create. But th that's another topic for right now. So in essence, uh, we're all gonna be astronauts long-term, um, but it's gonna be a lot safer and a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable. But anyway, to the point at hand. Back in the day, I found out about something that probably many of you all are aware of. It's a program, and I don't believe it is currently in operation, but it was called SETI, S-E-T-I, the SETI program. And what uh, that acronym, that word, the acronym for that word, simply stands for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. And what it involved was um, the scientists, astronomers, radio astronomers, taking a series of radio telescopes that they could get the funding and use and sweeping the skies, um, looking for some kind of radio signal from outer space that <clears throat> because of um, uh, the way it was being transmitted, they would know, as we all do, <laughs> Um, that it was not just some random pattern that came from outer space because uh, stars and um, th things in the universe, um, because there's electromagnetics going on, um, there is random noise that is going on that these radio telescopes can pick up, even kind of unusual noises from pulsars and quasars and things like that. But these do not indicate um, intelligence. Um, we intuitively know what intelligence is. 
Um, we've referred to this, you know, we walk down the beach. Um, we, because we live in this world, if we've walked down, you know, a beach a few times, we know intuitively the way the wind and the waves and make patterns on the sand. And we know what's natural. But if we happen to come across a pattern that looks like a heart with John loves Mary, maybe a little arrow through it, we know that someone, uh, a mind did that. All right. And so that was the premise, what these folks um, uh, you know, we're setting out to do. And I was very intrigued by that because at that point in my journey, I had been so repeatedly taught that life had, evol had evolved on this planet. Um, and this universe is so big, there's so many stars, there, there had to be, has to be other planets. And so therefore it makes sense that life would have evolved someplace else. I used to say that all the time. Um, but I had no idea of the stupidity stupendously complex um, uh, living systems, uh, the, the complexity within living systems. And um, as, I've, I've, as I began to study these laws, um, and the one we're talking about here as well, began to realize, um, along with a lot of other very highly educated scientists that I've referred to, um, that have said, no, this, this is not possible. Um, things don't just pop into existence. Okay, but back then, that's what these folks were doing. They were searching the sky, all right? I don't think it is funded anymore. They never found anything, all right? And um, they, um, <laughs> and again, my point is not to, uh, you know, get into all the details about how long it lasted and all these different things. That's why I didn't really even do any research on that. What I want to do is I want to point out something very significant, um, that folks, if they had in their, in, in the period of time they were, you know, running this program, had they found some kind of a pattern, radio pattern from outer space, even if it was very, very simple, but it was something that was non-random, something that natural processes, and again, it, 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 it um, por um, portrayed or relayed information, and, and again, they would know, we all would know. Wow, that would indicate that there was some type of intelligence that had produced that message, all right? And therefore, you know, again, some kind of intelligent being out there, maybe civilization, whatever. That was the premise. And it was a sound premise. All right? Um, because again, we intuitively know where information comes from. Well, as I said, they never did find anything. And I don't believe that it's being funded anymore. All right? But here's what started to confuse me. And, and, and I started to, wait a minute, I'm like, what's going on with this? Because there was a disconnect. Because then if we go and look, as I've already referred to, um, and specifically in the video I did, uh, I believe it was uh, session five, entitled Tiny Hands, talking about um, the DNA code that um, you know, comes together and begins the process of the birth of a child, the construct, the manufacturing, the knitting together of a, of a new human being. Um, but the, the, what we have inside us is a highly complex code, all right? We have information in us, all right, in this uh, amazing um, molecule called DNA. Um, as a matter of fact, it's been called the, the, the most complex um, uh, information holding mechanism that we're aware of. As a matter of fact, let me give you a little quote um, from Bill Gates. I'm sure everybody knows Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft. Um, listen to this quote by him. DNA is like a computer program, but far, far more advanced than any software ever created. Did you get that? DNA is like a computer program, but far, far more advanced than any software ever created. Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft. And Bill Gates knows, and we all know that Bill Gates does not, um, well, let me put it this way. He employs um, highly educated software engineers to create his software, all right? Um, software does not pop into existence, all right? So what, what I began to um, question was, wait a minute, and, and not myself, not just myself in a vacuum. Again, folks, I didn't do this in a vacuum. Um, I, I was doing this um, and looking at both sides of the evidence. I was listening to the evidence presented, as I've indicated already, um, for both sides. And, and I had some very, very highly credentialed, educated scientists um, that were saying, wait a minute, you know, we, we've got a code here. And, and it doesn't take a highly educated scientist to know that, right? Um, it, it's, it's, it's right there in front of our face. 
So what I didn't understand initially was why if they found even a simple code um, out in space that came in, they would, hey, you know, there, there's intelligence out there. And yet right inside of us, every living cell, all right, in us, every cell in us, we, I mean, you know, what do we have? 30, you know, I've heard 30, 50, 100 trillion cells in the, in the average human body. Um, and, and, and as a matter of fact, the amount of this microscopic DNA that's in every cell, if you stretch it out end to end, it's, it's six feet long. You know, I used to say we have a half a million miles of DNA in us. You know, I heard that somewhere and I, I, I you know, I, 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 I figured, well, you know, six feet, the, you know, but I never really did the math myself. And I'm like, wait a minute. I mean, you, you take 30 trillion cells, multiply that times six feet, and then divide it by, you know, 5,280 feet for, per mile, you get way more than a half a million miles of DNA. It's in the billions. All right, code, folks, that's code. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, wait a minute. Why are we saying, hey, if we find it out there, that means intelligence. But if we find it in us, we explain that away. Well, not everybody explains it away. There are a lot of people that are like, wait a minute. This is an artifact of a vast mind. This is evidence of a vast mind. This is the handwriting of, a, of an infinite creator who has the capability uh, of doing all this. I mean, you know, building up the atoms and the molecules um, that he used to write the DNA with, all right? And, and so um, what's the situation here, all right? Folks, I began to understand when I was on this journey that it's the implications okay, of where that evidence of information um, is presented, all right, or what those implications are. The implications, if we found it out in outer space, means, hey, there's another, um, uh, you know, there's intelligence way out there, uh, there's some other civilization way out there. And folks, the essence of what it really does, a lot of people believe, is somehow it would validate the fact, well, you know, we evolved here, they evolved there, all right? Um, but that still would belay the question of where did the information came from, even if they found some civilization out there, but they haven't. But what we have found, uh, just this unbelievable level and degree of information inside of human beings. Well, again, what does that mean? Well, the implications of, of a creator, um, pe you know, a lot of people don't like, they don't want, um, but that's not being intellectually honest. All right, and, and I, I mean, as, and as I've said before, I said it in the very, very first video I did with, in that series, My Great Questions Quest, all right? It doesn't matter whether we believe he's there or we don't believe he's there. I mean, it does on one level, but re what really matters is the, does the evidence point to whether he's there or not? Because based on what the evidence, you know, if that evidence is there and it's, you know, it's pretty compelling, if not outright conclusive, then it's far better for us to you know, acknowledge that and align our beliefs up with what is real because just pretending he's not there if he is doesn't make him go away. We're, we're gonna all have to deal with him at some point in time. And if we really know what his heart is for man, why he made us in the first place, um, which kind of ties right into this Christmas season that we're in right now, or we're starting as we move into December, um, and that this, you know, this creator God um, came to earth in the form of a man. Um, it's the, mo the most amazing thing, okay, because Christ is the creator. And I, I talk about that in those, he was the creator before he became the savior. And he, def you know, again, this, this amazing incarnation, allowing himself to be born as a baby. You know, if, if, you haven't, if you haven't had a chance to go back and listen to that video I did called Where Lambs Are Born, I did it a year or two ago. It's on the website, um, talking about, um, you know, some information, again, information that I found out about um, regarding um, the significance of the, nat the nativity. Because um, God doesn't do random. Why was Jesus, we know why prophetically he was born in Bethlehem, but why in a manger? Um, why in a, a little stable? And um, it, it was the most, it was the most mind-blowing um, uh, new information that I heard about that, that just warmed my heart and just, you know, the wonder of it all. And so I did a video on it, okay? <laughs> so anyway, I've told the story many times, but you may want to check it out since we're moving into that season. And, and so again, um, folks, there were, these, there, there were these laws 
um, that as I was on my journey, um, I began to look at. And, and, you know, without even looking at any of the evidence, just the fact that these five laws, the five laws, again, the law of conservation, all right? The matter can be neither created nor destroyed. Think about that. That is an, that is an observable, objective law, one of the best proved law. These are all best proved laws. These aren't some random little sideline deals. Matter cannot be created or destroyed. Right now in the world in which we live, we, we see it being maintained. It can degrade. There's the second law. It can get degrade, but it doesn't go up by itself. All right. And then I talked about in the last video, the law of cause and effect. Every effect must have an adequate cause and that cause must both precede it and be greater than the effect it produces. And now we're talking about the law of information. Um, where does the information come from that, that, that has to be here? And, you know, it ties into um, the other um, principle, if you will. It's really a law, um, the, the, the conditions that are required to temporarily overcome this law of decay that's constantly trying to drag everything down. Well, how do we get this buildup, okay? How do we make a microphone? How do we make a person? How do we make a computer, all right? There are conditions that must be met. I did a video on this already. <laughs> I call it Marcus D's four P's, all right? Because we need power, we need a process, we need parts, but the most important of which, of those four P's, is we need plans, we need instructions, we need a blueprint, we need information, which explains how these three parts, are these three, um, P's, factors, if you will, can all be integrated to temporarily make a Marcus D, temporarily make a computer, a microphone, that are all going to run out and wear out anyway, all right, until this great God undoes that law, all right, and nothing in that eternal realm is going to wear out anymore, folks. Um, it's the most amazing thing. So, I, again, folks, this was my journey. I told you before, I, I, I didn't need a lot of convincing, all right, you know, I, I was looking. I wanted there to be a God. I wanted there to be hope. I wanted there to be a, a day of, of, of reckoning, all right, where all the wrongs would be made right and all the rights were going to be rewarded, all right? I wanted there to be one. I wasn't going to pretend. I wanted the evidence that pointed that. But once I started seeing the evidence, I was a quick sell, <laughs> okay? And, and this just began to pile and pile and pile, um, you know, more on top of the other. And, and folks, it built my faith. Um, and I trust it'll build your faith. It should. I, I, that's what it's all about. And, and what it does, folks, is it gives us a transcendent hope. Um, and it, re, it should reorder our lives so that we should um, want to get really as connected as we possibly can with this mind who has left this, um, th this huge amount of proof that he's there. Look, folks, God is a spirit. The scripture says that. He's unseen. He's of a different order of being. All right, the, the spirit, the spiritual realm is really superior to this physical realm. You know, I've already mentioned with the atoms that the, that this is all a this is all a visible, tangible manifestation of unseen power and unseen order. Um, and, 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 but so God, you know, he, he um, you know, well, that's part of the reason why he came, you know, as Christ. Um, we got to remember, okay, Jesus who walked this earth, Jesus of Nazareth. Um, what we saw on the outside was not who he was, okay, or what they saw. We have, we, you know, we haven't obviously seen it. Um, I, honestly, I've never liked pictures of, of trying to portray who Christ is, movies, whatever. I know it's all good and everything. I, I don't because I think of him as the cosmic Christ. I like to think of him as the creator um, and, and because that's who he is, the cosmic Christ. And um, so, um, and, and Lord again, I mean, Lord again, I'm just, folks so used to talking to him all the time. Um, that's the mode we should get into. He should become our best friend. He should, because he's the one that's there all the time. When, when heaven and earth, one of these days, time as we know it's going to be gone, heaven and earth are going to pass away. All the people we know are going to be gone. Yeah, they're going to pass over to the other side. But the, but the ultimate reality, it's not going to be, you know, people, oh, I can't wait to see so-and-so when I get to heaven. I can't wait to see my wife. I can't see, wait to see my kids, my grandparents, whatever. And that's all fine. That's, that's all well and good. But what about this great God? How hungry are we to see him? Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you what, when we do see him for what he really is, we're not going to really be too interested in seeing anybody else for a long, long time. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's the most mind-blowing reality there is. So, folks, one more, one more piece of evidence. 
for Marcus D. Um, that um, that's that's made me believe all the more, and um, and I'm excited about it, and I trust you are too. So, I want to wish you all happy and blessed and peaceful and safe uh, Christmas season. Um, and as we you know we're rolling into the final month of 2023, Lord willing, you know 2024. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. This this present world is not promised to any of us. Um, but if he does uh, hold off a little longer. Um, you know, we may have some more time. Folks, let me just ask you this in closing, and I'm going to ask it of myself all the time. In light of this evidence, in light of the fact that there is a God, in light of the fact that the true reality is an eternal reality, this is a temporary reality. This is a, this is a proving grounds. I've said it many times. All right. This is a, this life is not a resting place. It's a testing place. All these, these uh, you know, really valid sayings that we hear. Um, but what are we doing with it? What has changed in your life in 2023 in terms of the eternal? All right, have we grown spiritually? Do we know this God better? Has has the time just gone by or have we invested some of it? Because folks, we we are gonna give an account for it all. Even as Christians, we're gonna give an account, all right? It's not like, hey, you know, I'm saved, I trusted Christ, now I'm good to go, live whatever way I want. No, this life is about being, tra- folks, transformed into him. This divine nature inside of us that, you know, oh, you know, we don't, Mark, I don't look any different. You know, I don't, Mark is, yeah, I look, I look a little older, <laughs> okay, if anything. But, but it, it's that same spirit, you know, it, folks, look at the analogy of Christ. You know, he had a human exterior. Who was he on the inside? Okay, the Almighty Eternal God. What? What? I mean, they, there are amazing open secrets in the Scripture. What are we being turned into? We're being turned into to the degree we want to, the degree we pursue this, the degree we 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 we. You know, folks, I don't want to start launching off on the sanctification. Okay, um, but but being conformed to His image, we're being transformed on uh, transformed on the inside. And one day, this old shell is going to pop off. Okay. And, and all that treasure, all this glory, this power, this wisdom, you know, that, 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 that's kind of, you know, again, it's, it's kind of bottled up right now. It's going to pop out. And, and it's, it's going to be mind-blowing what we're going to be turned into. Um, and ultimately, I'm going to get into some of that stuff in these videos because it is mind-blowing. There, there, there is nothing... This entire world, 10 times over, I don't care what kind of cool things, how much money, how much fame, how much fortune, how much pleasure, people can run. There is nothing, nothing that is compared to just the glimpses we're getting of what this God has prepared for those of us that love him. There is no greater investment, folks. And my prayer is that uh, we will do better, okay? (laughs) That's my prayer. And I trust that it's yours too, okay? So in the meantime, God bless you folks. Merry Christmas, um, safe and prosperous new year, Lord willing, and we'll get to them. But uh, make them count, folks, make them count. Let's make them count. Marcus D and all of us as a team, let's make them count, okay? So until next time, okay? Um, Yeah, God bless y'all, bye-bye.